This has been a great series. This series has been so good because we decided to mess up the teaching a little bit and, and break it into two parts where we would look at the book of Hebrews, spend a few minutes just uh, unpacking a little bit more expository about what it might say to us at a certain time in history here, and then turn it over after a time of just reflection to someone to unpack and actually, how are they outworking the Word of God in their lives? How are they grappling with this? How are they working it through? So this is the last one of those we're going to do. We're going to have a little recap. Now, of course, this book, Book of Hebrews, was probably written around 67 to 69 AD. The reason we know that is because the temple is still operational. It's been talked about in the present tense. So it hasn't got to AD 70 when the temple is destroyed. Uh, for a lot of years, it was thought that Paul wrote it. But there's more thinking now that maybe it was Apollos or maybe Barnabas. Uh, because Paul's methodology is to always introduce himself. I, Paul, a servant of. This person doesn't identify themselves. And the focus is a little bit different to what Paul normally focuses around. Um, it was written for Jewish Christians. These are ones that have come out of Judaism. They were now worshipping Christ. They were now following Christ. But persecution, tribulation, and suffering have come. And so now the tendency is they want to go back to the old Mosaic way of doing things because it's easy, it's simple to understand. And the words are being delivered to them to encourage them to not drift back. Don't go back. Stay here because in a little while that system is going to be gone. And a few years later, AD 70, it was gone. So it's to encourage these guys to be faithful and to continue. Now, we were never part of that old covenant. We are actually the Gentile nation. So our tendency is not going to want to revert back to law as much. Our tendency is going to want to go back to uh, sin. We just want to go back and to go back and to back to the things of the world that we came out of, and we're going to be continually trapped in it. And that's what uh, Taylor was being highlighting this morning through the Holy Spirit. Five themes in it, superiority of Christ, perseverance, faith that pleases God, discipline that comes to God's children, and Christian living. Now, the Christian living, well, I'm going to pause here for a second because that really flushed something out. I made a statement, and the statement was this about sexual immorality. And that is, all sexual activity is reserved for only within the confines of marriage between a man and a woman. And I said, anything that you can think of outside of that is sin, unless it's happening within the confines of marriage between a man and a woman. Whoa, man, did I flush some things out. Did we open Pandora's box? And, and I had people from other parts of the body of Christ that uh, seem to think it's okay to do a whole bunch of things, which is not okay. So I've said it again, just in case it didn't open your box yet, and it needs to be opened, and we need to talk about it so we can actually help you, because some of the things were like, ooh, man, that was forward, <laughs> never mind. But that was it, so there was a, there's those five themes, uh, five warnings in there. Warning, do not drift away. Warning, do not harden your heart, as they did in testing and rebellion. Warning, grow up. Don't be immature. Grow up in, into the fullness of Christ. Warning, if you deliberately keep singing after you have come to the knowledge of truth, there is no sacrifice for sins, just a dreadful fear of judgment. So you want to, that's a warning. Don't keep sinning after you know the truth. And then don't refuse the, uh, refuse the one that speaks to us from heaven, which is talking about Jesus. So, and then we opened up, of course, in times past, he spoke through... The prophets, in various ways, he's not speaking through the prophets anymore, speaking via his son, which is the word of God. So now let's, let's see if I can uh, continue my serial offending. I always say to people, I'm a serial offender. Uh, if I don't offend you this week, it'll probably be next week or the week afterwards, because we're committed to teach everything about the scriptures, not just the portions that we like and we want to teach. So maybe today's your day. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what happens. If you were born around the 50s or, or you grew up around the 50s, 60s, 70s into the early 80s, uh, you lived with a continual fear that was sitting over our heads. Now, can you remember what that fear was? Lots of movies were made about it, oh, all over the place. And it was the fear of something called global thermonuclear war. We lived with the fear of this all the time. All the time it was going on, really culminated in the 80s with the Cuban mission, um, mission crisis. But they've written so many things about this now, so many articles about what this did to our generation growing up. Growing up continually with the fear that this world is going to end at any moment 
probably laid the foundation for the 60s and the 70s, the whole free love, uh, lack of moral movement. It probably started there because they started to realize that when people live continually in this fear component, they start to cast off restraint, good restraint. Good restraint that God said, there's a standard for you on how to live. Stay within that. That'll keep you blessed. If you step outside, it's going to go ugly. But when you think you're going to die at any moment, you cast off restraint. You know? Why? Why? You know, why should I remain pure and a virgin until I'm married? I'm not going to get married. We're never going to get there. I don't want to die without experiencing sex. And some are going, I can't find a husband. I just need a baby. Any man will do anything. So there's this casting off of restraint, and it's like, well, what's the point in saving? There's no future. There's no point in saving. Why even bother getting a job? Well, that summed up the 60s, 70s, and 80s, isn't it? Why bother getting a job? Why? Because this mindset had had so captured us that we seriously thought that we were going to die at any moment. The bad news is, now we're in our pushing 60s, We didn't die, and now we've got to fix up all the mess that we made during the time that we cast off the restraint. It was awful. It was awful. Our spiritual enemy took advantage of this and totally took people way, way, way away from God. That's what we grew up with. Now, guess what? It's your turn. It's your turn. And it's not global thermonuclear war. It's global warming. And another generation is being instilled with fear. That the world as you know it, it's not going to exist. It's going to all be consumed. It's going to burn up and this is going to happen. And now they wrote all these movies about it. And it's like, and it's instilling this fear back in you again. So why does it surprise us that we have the same thing? Why should I worry about remaining pure until I'm married? I'm probably never going to get there. And I, I want to have sex before this thing happens. So, and I need a baby. So, so what have we got? We've got the things casting off restraint, casting it off because in fear, we don't think there's going to be a future out there. Don't bother getting a job. There's no point in saving for the future. In fact, because there's no future, let's rack up the debt right now. The problem is in 20 years, you're going to be paying for that if the Lord should tarry and not return. That's what happens when you cast off restraint. Does the Bible have anything to say about this topic? It doesn't have anything. Is there anything that can instruct us? Well, it actually does in a number of pieces, but I'm going to spend a few minutes this morning just talking for a few verses out of Hebrews. Hebrews 1 verse 10. In the beginning... Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. So right from the start, in the beginning, he started. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. There's an intelligent design. There is an intelligent designer. If there was a big bang, there was a big banger that was making the big bang. Our world is not a process of billions of years of unclear, undefined, unproved evolution. We're not a random accident. It says, this is clear. I started it at the beginning. This world has a starting point, and I put it in place. That changes a whole lot about the way we approach things. But let's read on. They will perish, but you remain. What? They will perish. Who is the they? The heavens and the earth. So the earth has a very, very clear starting point. It's by an intelligent designer. But here's the kicker. Here's the part that everybody loves. It also has a very clear expiry date. It is perishing. It is expiring. But the good news, he says, but it's okay. He will remain. So that's really encouraging. Because if there's a God there that creates the heaven and the earth and it is perishing, he's done it once, which means he can do what? He can do it again. If you've done something once, you can do it again. Hard if you haven't done it once. But he's done it once, he can do it again. Oh my goodness. So there's intelligent design, designer, but this thing is perishing. It's got an expiry date. Let's, let's keep going. 
they will wear out like a garment. How does a garment wear out? It gets faded, it gets out of shape, gets frayed, gets torn, gets holes in it. It's wearing out. Now, of course, if you buy designer jeans that have all that in there already, get in at the end, it's going to cost you 500 bucks and a kidney. They're so expensive. But it's wearing out. He's saying the garment's wearing out. It's wearing out. So here's the question to ask. Is there any evidence? I don't know about you. Is there any evidence anywhere that people are saying that maybe this world might be wearing out? Any signs of change? Anything like that? You know, like anybody heard of like holes in the ozone layer? Now, the scientists fight about this. Some say it is, some say it isn't, some I don't have a clue. Others say, well, you know, the ice caps, look at them, they're melting there. And then the next year, it's like the biggest ice caps ever. They don't have a clue. Then there's unpredictable weather patterns going on. Oh, drought, earthquakes, tearing. Is there any evidence that maybe, maybe this thing's wearing out? What's it mean? Maybe, just maybe, I'm just putting it out there for intelligent people to consider. Just maybe this place is wearing out. And just maybe it's happening on the creator's timetable and not ours. The thing with us human beings is we are so arrogant. We always think it's about us. We created all this. It's all about us. Really? Maybe it's not about us. Maybe it's actually happening on his timetable. Maybe he created the design. Maybe he's sustaining it. But you know what? It's wearing out. It has an expiry date. Hmm. Let's read on. He says, you will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed. So he says, you know what? When it's finally, when it's reached its expiry date, this is all cool. I'm just going to roll them up and I'm going to change them. I'll put a new set in, a new heavens and a new earth. So the question is for us, What should be our response if you read the scriptures? Three things. We had to steward this earth. No doubt about it. That goes right back to the Garden of Eden. We have a responsibility not to pollute, not to litter, and not to damage this earth. We have that responsibility. Our national leaders should have the responsibility of monitoring all business that have activities that's doing damage to this world of ours. And they should be called to account to change their practices or shut down. That's how we steward this earth. The next thing is we've got to steward the wealth that we have well before God. You don't want to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars trying to stop something that God has said is going to happen. You can't stop what God has predetermined is going to happen. You have to be a good steward, but then you need to You need to say, okay, how do we steal what we got here? We're into areas where we can make change. I was with a lady in the park yesterday, and we were talking about social media and where the kids were playing, and uh, she said, oh, we're so disconnected. She said, if only we could all get together and we could solve the whole climate change. And I thought, you seriously think you're going to do that? You're not going to do that. The creator has said it's perishing. It's got an expiry date. It is, it is shifting a certain direction. doesn't mean we throw our hands in the air and be abusive, but it means you don't, you don't waste money on things you can't fix. And I would suggest you relocate the funds into things that you can fix, like poverty, things that you can fix, all the social ills that are going on in our world because of the disintegration of the family unit and the eroding of the consciousness of God out of society. I heard a radio interview about two weeks ago. They were talking about the jails. One of our jails is at 300% capacity. And someone that should have been in jail was up before the judge, and they just let them go because there's no place to put them. Pretty soon they're going to have to put us in the jails to keep us safe. Put the good people in. There's less of them. We're in such a mess. Suicide's going up all over the place. People are more connected than ever via social media and more disconnected than ever when it comes to human touch and human response. People are more anxious and they are more afraid. Why? Because they fear. It's all going to go. It's all going to end. It's all going to disappear. Well, it says it's going to wear out slowly and then when it gets to that point, it says God will change it and there'll be a new heavens and a new earth. You don't need to worry about that. So you steward the resources, steward the earth, do do our right thing, do diligence, 
steward our wealth to use it appropriately to do things that we can make a difference in, not things that we can't. You don't want to be trying to fight against God's timetable. That is a serious lack of judgment. And the third thing is refuse to worry. Simply trust God. Trust him. Just trust him. If he created the heavens and the earth and it's got an expiry date and it's wearing out and it's on his timetable, if he's done it before, he can do it again. If scriptures say in other areas, he's going to do it again. You just need to relax. And if you relax and stop fearing what the media and everyone is saying is going to happen and start trusting God, you will not cast off restraint. Because you'll know, well, I don't know when this thing's going to wind up. I don't know the expiry date, but I know it's going to happen. So what am I going to do? Well, I guess I'll just have to love God, spend time with Him, walk intimately at Him, and when the time is right, I'll be ready. So you don't want to cast off restraint. People cast off restraint when they fear they're going to miss out on everything in life because they feel like the world is going to disappear. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is coming out of the Bible. At the end, of when Christ returns, it says that sin, wickedness, and all evil will be removed. It says it will be removed and there will be judgment. Then it says the people of God will be caught up, and I believe, to almost like the grandstands of heaven, and we will watch him roll out the new heavens and the new earth. There is nothing to worry about. There is nothing. If you go searching, and I read a lot about science and that, they can't agree on anything. The only thing they can agree on is disagreeing, but they can't even agree that they disagree because that would be agreement, and they can't do that. And it goes on and says, but you remain the same, and your years never end. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust Him. He knows what's going on. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for me. He has a way of looking after His own people. He knows how to do that. Nothing is a surprise to him. This world will continue on as it is until the Lord returns and then shifts it, gets rid of all the evil, all the wickedness, all the sin, and then gives you a new heavens and a new earth, unencumbered by all the pain, all the suffering, all the death, and death will finally be swallowed up in victory. Listen, if the only thing you do is listen to the news on Facebook or on your TV or anything like that, you are the most uninformed person in the world because they don't know anything until after it's happened. They are reporters of the past. That's all they report on. If you will read your Bible, if you will fall in love with this Word of God, you'll find things like that, gems all the way through. Like in Hebrews, gems. Because what's God talking to you about through that? Not the past. He's telling you the future. So he's saying, just walk with me. Allow me to rest your heart. You don't need to fear anything. Nothing gets wrapped up here until I wrap it up. And then I change it. So you can live a uniquely better life, which is one that is not driven by fear, not driven by the media, not driven by people who have agendas, but one that is driven by a solidness and a peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Friends, I remember what it was like as a kid, the fear. And I, even as I've been processing some of the things, the messes that I got into was because I thought there would not be a future. And I cast off restraint. And I paid the price for it. And there'd be others sitting here that did exactly the same. As I did. You young ones, don't, don't allow the enemy to cause you to feel like this is all going to blow up in your face and it's all going to go. There is no scientific evidence for that that's sustainable. But there is biblical evidence. God created. He's sustaining it. It has an expiry date. He's going to roll it up and wind it up. You just steward well what we have, steward our resources well to change what we can, which is the complete pandemonium of destruction because of the breakdown of the family unit and the eroding of a God consciousness and then just trust God and when it happens it happens we'll be ready for it nothing to fear let's pray Father I just thank you for this wonderful book this book that's led by your spirit 
This book that can calm us from all of the things that the movies and media and that want to do to try and cause us to fear, which will cause us to cast off restraint because we feel like somehow you're not looking after us and we're going to miss out on stuff. But Lord, help us just to relax and just say, you know what, we're going to trust you. You are worthy to be worshipped. You're worthy to be worshipped. And so, Father, we're going to stop listening a lot less to the TV and social media. And we're going to start listening a lot more to you. Reveal to us from your word. Give us eyes to see, a heart that understands, ears to hear, so that our hearts can be solid, can be solid in Jesus.